Now, by design, the slipbox is meant to be browsed, not search. Again, what I said prior is there were no mechanisms to do this type of search functionality, and you definitely didn't have the ability to search the context of, uh, of a note. So if we wanted to say fleeting in here, this actually searches the body of all the notes that we can see fleeting. Those are all tremendous benefits that we have available to us when we want to, but the general theme of it is that it's supposed to be browsed, and the reason for that is so that you can stumble upon prior knowledge that you've long since forgotten. Forgotten. Uh, so let's just take a look at how the ways that we have the methods available to us in Obsidian to browse it. Now the graph view is um, probably the coolest feature in Obsidian, but it does take a great deal of time to make useful. Like how you design and connect your notes will matter of how useful this graph view is. Now in here, the general thing is is that the lines create you know establish connections, and when you hover over those connections, you can see all the notes that are connected to it. And the node itself will get bigger as it has more and more connections. So if you can see here, the biggest one is how to take smart notes, which is the book. So every single permanent note that I wrote, I added that little page number link to it, and that is feeding to this. So you could very easily see in here which literature notes have had the most impact as far as generating ideas. Now, that doesn't mean to say that they're the most interesting because because are impactful because typically in the beginning of any branch of knowledge that you develop, you're going to take more notes. There's just more unknown unknowns. And as you start to fill it in, there'd be less. So if I were to go and read some blog posts now, after taking this many notes on smart notes, I would probably condense down a five or six page article into maybe one or two notes because I have fewer gaps in my knowledge to fill. But it is nonetheless fascinating to see how many notes you've created. So the second node that I have here, you know, just visually looking around um, is smart notes. So smart notes is that structure note that links out to all these other things. And you can see it linked back to the index. Um, and this is really interesting. If you look at the index, here's my top level ones. So productive writing, and I can start to browse my knowledge base with this. So like, oh, productive writing goes back to smart notes. Smart notes fractures out into all these things. And here's permanent notes now. And that's why I think it's it's valuable to have the structure notes named and we no longer like there isn't such a great uh, there isn't a lot of utility that I see currently in the sequencing of the names because through the structure notes and that turn into topics and then generate subtopics you can start to navigate and build up that knowledge in very much the same way that a sequence would um, you just don't have those same physical limitations uh, and also naming the note doesn't add any backlinks and stuff like that currently so there it just it in the end creates more work work um, but yeah if we look at the next biggest node is how to take uh, smart notes in obsidian but anyway this gives you a nice overview of the connections so that's one way you can do it the traditional and most common way that you'll do it though is you'll just go to the index you'll come back to your front page index as you're adding notes or you're trying to discover information for an article and you'll you'll browse around so you'll probably come in here and you can peek again. If you have it in the preview mode, you don't have to hold down the command or control button. You can just hover and you can read the notes um, and you can you can open them up like this. So you can read several at a time and you can even save these to a workspace. Uh, so let's just see what how that is a core plugin, by the way. So if you go to core plugins and you type workspace and you turn this on, you will get this little button and this will pull up a workspace. So if, Say you're, you're, you're writing something, you could, you could pull up right, a workspace. We'll show you that more when we get to the project note because it's very useful. Um, but then you could kind of see, okay, here's all this. Uh, but then if you wanted to, let's open up some smart notes so you can see the link. So if we go to fleeting note, we want to write about fleeting note, and we're just curious, you know, what are the connections? We could come to this page, and we could look at the backlinks. And that's useful, uh, but it's also useful to have a visual. And here's what the visual is. We'll we'll hide that and open it in a side panel because it'll be it'll be easier to see. So if we open up local graph graph, uh, we can see all the connections that fleeting note has. So as we're writing with the fleeting notes, we can hover over some direct note to note links. Um, so it's taken in a manner that is with any viable material. So that's useful. And we could click into that. And we can see that that is uh, a subnote off fleeting note. And then it's also linked to this learning is the result of effort, not consumption. 
And they're like, okay. So that's kind of why we, we take notes. And if we looked at that, so that you can see, now we are, we're browsing around in the slipbox. We're stumbling upon previous knowledge that would help us to write that. So as you can imagine, you, again, you fast forward, you've been taking some notes and you've been doing your diligence linking. This is where it pays off. This is the compound interest that pays off when you invest the time into connecting these note-to-note -note links. So you get these rich connections that will help you build a narrative with your prior knowledge uh, and start to resurface questions that you ask that you haven't yet answered. Um, and we could find our way back to the index and we could browse to Slipbox. So it's, you can browse just with that, but it is neat to have the graph view open because it'll update as you move around. So if we go to productive writing, we can see that it has all these and there's another structure node of writing as a skill or note taking as a skill. Um, and you can see I've already started to fill out these uh, keywords. So deliberate practice, sustained attention. So it's pointing out that, you know, the effort of, involved and note taking helps you foster your sustained attention. That is true. That is very true. Um, I have, I've been able to know, I've noticed a tremendous amount of difference in taking smart notes and maintaining that level of focus has applied to everything else in my life from a sustained air, uh, sustained attention. Uh, develop relevance is a really interesting point, um, which is as you go along and you start to take these notes, you start to become better at identifying what's relevant to you. And that is the best filter you can have for, for information overload. So that's another way that you can navigate the slipbox is this, you know, again, you kind of have your two modes. Um, you have your graph view, like your overall graph view, and you have your index. Uh, and then your index can also support the local graph. So that those are your two main modes, but you have some other things at your disposal. You do have the search. So if you wanted to say, uh, you know, Say you remember a particular phrase, but you, you know, you can't, you didn't do a very good job with the keywords. You just can't find it. It's too down deep. Um, you could say, you know, note taking. Here's every note that has that phrase inside the contact. So you can search the contents of all your notes, which is great. Um, and I haven't been using these too much, but the other way that you can navigate is you could, you could do tags. Um, and again, if we go to the graph view, I have one tag for keywords. And once you click the tag, it will just give you a list. It doesn't give you a nice local graph. It just says, hey, here's a list of all the notes that have keywords tagged to them. Um, I haven't found a good use for that um, yet, but what I have been doing is tagging uh, kind of overarching stories. So like a good example might be um, deliberate practice or the uh, Zygarnik effect where I continually stumble upon examples of the Zygarnik effect in deliberate practice, uh, but in different contexts. So they're not kind of all bubbled up under one, you know, structure note called deliberate practice because it's kind of vague. And so I use keywords to identify them broadly across many different structure notes. Um, but hopefully, you know, maybe I'll have an update to that at some point. But that, that's another way that you can navigate your slip boxes through uh, keyword search. Again, that's just done with a search, a search you can do. Um, other than text, you can search tags and stuff like that. Um, right here, you can see all your options, path, file, tag, line, section. So that is it for navigating the slipbox. Again, your primary mode, just to reiterate, is going to be just browsing the index and browsing, surfing the links, so to speak. Very much like you would surf the internet, but this is your knowledge base of your prior knowledge, your lattice work, so to speak. So that is it for uh, the navigation side. The final thing is we'll take a look at what it looks like to use these notes to generate a body of work in a project. And again, what I mentioned prior is you're going to need a substantial reason to invest this amount of time. Um, it's very much like developing the skill of reading. It takes a lot of time and practice. Um, and a lot of the dividends, well, I guess it's like investing too. A lot of dividends don't pay off after a significant amount of it. interest uh, and effort has been already invested. And I want to prove to you that it is worthwhile. And this course is hopefully a testament to it being worth your time to invest in.